as the old patriarchs would say, that's all right. They would sing a song, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Israel, that's all right. Oh, I know I have a seed in the kingdom of Yahweh. That's all right. See, I don't sing like you sing. I simply do not rehearse lines and regurgitate that. I sing from, from the land. So I'm not trying to accommodate an association with our flesh to make it acceptable and the tone resonate as to what we're familiar with. That's our problem. Because we want everything accommodating to our ills, our ill wills, everything must format to that format that we have perceived is the way that it ought to go. And it's a way that seems right in our bosom. And all of our ways are right. I said to one the other day, I never think a right thought. I have never done anything right. In all of my life, I have never done anything right. You may, but not me. I can do all things. Yoshua Hamashiach. Left to myself, my thoughts are thoughts of damnation. They're beyond corruption. They're beyond anything that is pure or the tahor of Yah, set apart, pristine, beautiful. So there is nothing right that I of myself form or fashion to do. Because everything that I and you can point at you, everything that I perceive, it's right. We can see the results of that, that it brings death. All the ways of a man, they are pure in his own iron. But the end thereof is Navith. He dies. He dies. She dies prematurely. They die prematurely. Because they lack the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. The revelation of his Hamashiach, Yahshua. So there is nothing right that distills from you or any of us. I owe everything to Almighty Yahweh. Without the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, without that, without that revelation, we have nothing. So all of my thoughts are wrong. I have no wisdom that I have constituted. I have nothing that I have patterned. I don't want to be wise as other men. I want to be able to labor in the derech, the pathway, the halach, the way that he directs me to proceed. And I want to do it with the adamant resistance of hell and to be faithful. Hallelujah. I said, I believe to my issue, I said I was in the garden the other day and I said, yeah, what a labor. So intense I have labored this year. Very intensifying labor that the sweat pours profusively. When I leave the garden, I'm wet from here to the bottom of my feet. I don't despise it. And yet there are those impediments, especially the ring, has caused such grievous, uh, unproductive uh, stalks and plants 
and the God. And we have the persistence of the crows and raccoons that their palate is not easily quenched. So they take advantage of the unguarded produce that has ripened in their eyes. And I said to my Abba, look at this. Well, the wisdom of my heart began to speak to me. No, look at you. As I allow those evil thoughts of concision separating me from the path of Sudik and the righteousness of Yah, that he has labored upon me and in me before I was ever shaped in my inner being. And yet my fruit are sparse. I'm not a very fruitful man. Don't write me hypocrite. This is a generation that question Yah at everything. Just like they question Moshe, what he speaks by his wisdom, the volume that flows from my mind, I appreciate that. Because I know my condition is worse than what I'm working on this garden, the garden. Worse than that. We need a word. And Yah shall speak unto us his lecha. The book shall be gala. He's going to remove that impediment of this carnal mind. Because the natural carnal mind is enmity against Torah. That's why he had to remove Yakahan away from all of those things uh, that would interfere into his insightfulness uh, that Yah could do one thing that is to open up his eye in uh, the life uh, and the strength of what substance uh, that Yah had placed in the man's bosom. Uh, so he put him on the owl called Patsmas. That he was far away from all of his familiarities, his surroundings. Uh, that he could simply trust only in Almighty Yah. And that is what the Sarah is going to teach us. Yeah. Damn it, we go through a little trial, we think that we are the only one. Yeah. And it ought to teach us to trust in Him. Yeah. He ought to restore and to build confidence. Yeah. And it doesn't do that. I want to begin with uh, a prophecy. And if it's not proven throughout the course of the book, it is of no essential value. I don't care what we read in the Brit Hadassah, the Renewed Covenant. Uh, if we cannot find a preponderance of evidence of that uh, in the Covenant uh, or the book of the Brit or the Sefer Brit, uh, it is of no value at all, Yisrael. That's why men take one verse and they try to prove a matter from that. You silly man. You are an unlearned beast. I will read from the book. Now you can challenge me, but make sure you got plenty of his way. Don't come with two or three or five or six. You better come with at least 100. Because that's what I'm coming with. If you don't believe me, try me then. I'm not coming with one or two. I'm coming with a preponderant, an amount that is beyond your ability to reason in. And then I'm going to drown you. And then I want to kill you and run the sword of the Ruach, the word of Yah, drive it from your brain down to your heart. Cut off the most vital organ, your liver. They can keep you alive without that heart beating. Sure they can. They got machines to breathe for you. 
But when that liver goes, you can forget it. Fact of the matter. The book open. You are grant unto me the diligence of this teaching. That it may be insightful to your nation. I want to begin in the book of Giliana Revelation. Chapter 5 and one verse I want to read. This profound prophecy that the Melach. And a Melach is a messenger that guards uh, the very essence and the profoundness uh, of Torah. So Yah doesn't dispense his Torah or cause it to be revealed, but only by those that he has uh, entrusted uh, with that revelation. And so there was one that stood before Yahweh and he had these Seals. There were seven seals uh, that the Torah would call uh, Hatam, that the wisdom and the revelation of that was sealed up for the time. And the revelation of Torah, or for to be open uh, in this time, uh, we must have a student, students, uh, men of you that this Torah has spoken precisely unto them, that they can reveal all things that is vitally important. And there was none that was able to open the book. And we all think we're able to open or the gala of Torah that we can distill doctrine or lacha to give insight when we don't know a damn thing. We have no wisdom of Torah. You don't have fear. Because the fear, as Shurok, Shurok says, uh, the fear of God caused you to love Yisrael. Yeah. Yeah. There's one thing about the essence of love. The old ones will say, you can sense that. You can feel pure love. I despise what is purported as love today. This damn phoniness. It's not love. That's why I tell you, don't love me. And don't tell me you love me. Don't write me and tell me you love me. Very seldom, sometimes I will say, man, I love you. I don't say that to many men or anyone. And he will say at times, his words to me are always the same. Keep preaching. And he backs that up with a substantial offering every week, every month. I do apologize every month. It's more than most folks get for Social Security. They're combined checks. That's what he sends every month. That's what the man sends. And he has been doing this for many, many, many years. Not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. He's been doing it for many, many years. He doesn't talk much to me, but he's my friend. Can't wait to see you, my friend. You know that. And so there was not one that was able to open the book. So if I take this book and say to you, began teaching from here. I don't need to copy scripture. I can open the book any place and teach. Any place in the book. And no one was able to open the book. It says in verse 2, Revelation 5, verse 2. He says, and I saw my eyes were open. I saw, he did not say a weak, but he says a koach, a strong melach. He had the spiritual physicality, the strength. I saw a strong melach proclaim he kara. His voice emanated in the heavens. His voice sound the alarm beyond uh, the ears to perceive. I saw a strong, a mighty, a powerful melach. 
He proclaimed with a loud voice with the substance uh, that he is Melach Yah. He is the messenger of Yah. He is the voice of Yah. He is the beauty of Yah. I saw him proclaim with a loud voice, uh, Who is? He used the word, Who is? Uh, idea. Who is worthy? Who is majestic enough? Who is powerful enough? Who is a dear? Who is worthy? Is every man worthy? He said, who is worthy? Who is great? The Torah says, as I read last week, uh, that Ezra was a great man. Because he labored continuously uh, in the Torah of Yah. And you think you're great? You don't even labor in the Torah of Yah? Yeah. You think that you're worthy, that, that you are a dear? That you have this majestic aura about you? Uh, you have a great persona. Your visibility or the perception of you, uh, even in the eyes of man, uh, they see something or a man uh, that is not of the norm, uh, of the normal protocol. Uh, but yet these are the great markings we place upon ourselves. Yeah. Who is worthy? Yeah. We're worthy of one thing, that's death and destruction. We have not earned one damn thing. There's nothing that we have done that is great. You better become more real than the way we respond. He's a mighty melach, great in great essence and power. The question was asked, who is able to Galah, to open the revelation, to reveal the power of this Hamashiach. He was among us, and we didn't even behold or perceive the great idea of the majestic power of Yah upon him. He is among us, supposedly, in us, uh, and yet we cannot see the idea. No one is dear to us today. And I'm not talking about you looking at someone. I'm talking about you looking at your own damn wicked heart. There was no one worthy. Who is able to galan, to open, to make this chazon, this precise utterance of your speech known to us precisely, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, to understand the relevance of Yakahana and searching it back to Bereshit. Where are those men today? Please tell me, where are they? Where are those men today? Tell me, Yisrael. There was not one found. Oh, I know what the next verse says. Who is able to uncover, to reveal the book. The book. Who is able to reveal unto us the Sefer. This is a legal document. Signed in the bare sheets by the dam of Omariah. Yeah. Who is able to open this. You just cannot go into a place where it says no trespassing. You don't trespass upon this. Uh, our minds filthy, our hearts uh, have not been purged from the stench uh, of our foul nature. You think you're going to sit down and understand you're going to open up Galab, this book? Uh, you are silly as a pound uh, of cat's dung. Yeah. Who is able to open this great book 
And not only to open this book, but then the seals must be broken. There can be nothing that impedes us. We have seals upon us our own wickedness. We have our arrogance. We don't hate that. We have all this intuitive knowledge that we think is right and we're wrong. We don't hate the evil. We don't hate our evil ways. We don't hate our arrogance, our pride. We don't hate it. Who is able to loose the seals. To bring forth the knowledge of this Torah. And to give us revelation of what is to be. You're not going to get it from this excerpt only from Yachanan. You must go back to the Bereshit of all things. The Bereith, the beginning. And we're going to open the book from the beginning, all right? We're going to open up what is the purpose of Giliana and the reason. What did the Navi and the prophets and the mighty messengers say of even this time of Sarah, of great trials, of great calamities and pain? And we are having pains even today that have been induced by our own wickedness of our sins. Yeah. And our disregard to what Yah says. Yeah. Yeah. To understand what book that even Yachahanan was writing from the precepts, the concepts, and the perspective of the book, then we must venture to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, and one verse I want to read. And then I want to drop down to verse 4. Daniel, Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. He speaks of a time. Now there must be witness of this time that he speaks of. And then the true messengers of Yah that we know of uh, in the Brit Hadassah, they must speak uh, in the same terminology that Daniel speaks in here. Daniel, Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. He says, there shall be a yom or a time... When there shall be one by the name of Mikael, Mikael, and it represents who is like Mikael or Mikael. Mikael is one that represents the totalness of Yah. Who is like Yah? That's what the name Mikael means. Who is like Yah? He said, There shall be one that shall stand, uh, shall stand, uh, he shall remain where Yah has positioned him because uh, he has one function. He will stand up. He is called the great Zah, the great prince, uh, just like the words Adir, who is worthy, uh, who is worthy to open the book that I began there in Gilyana. He says, who, who is a great prince uh, who stand for the children, the bane uh, of your people. That there is a people elected unto Yah that fulfill his purpose. Uh, and everything that we have been taught is to fulfill our purpose in life. It's too short to try to fulfill your false dreams. We must fulfill his purpose. He says, and there shall be a time of great Sarah, great agony, great calamity, great pain, whereby the mind of a man, as the old ones would say, will not know whether he's coming or going. He will not be able to differentiate between what is evil and what is tough. And we find that today, don't we? Faggots are exalted. Pedophiles and corrupt men position themselves in some of the most prominent positions in life. Hoish and wicked men and women usurp the predominance of power over nations and the nation. And the reason they do that over us is because we frankly, I will not stop saying this, we don't give a damn. 
We don't know how to love each other because we don't fear Yah. We have no fear. There shall be a time of sarah, of great distress and, and great bondage, such as never was since there was a nation. What we shall see, no nation has seen this. He says, even to that same time, uh, and then he says this to us, and at that time your people, uh, they shall be delivered. Everyone uh, who is found written uh, in the book. Everyone who is found written in the book. Now if we think that Yakahanan uh, had 30 or 40 or 200 scriptures to, to convey this revelation of this profound truth. Uh, only your sure can reveal uh, unto nations whose names uh, are in the book uh, and who is written uh, in the prominent place of the bosom uh, of Omar Yah. We must understand the totality of this book. We cannot uh, dissect set it, uh, we must understand it through its course, uh, through the pattern uh, that is already established. The pattern was there before Yachahan was separated on the Isle of Patmos. I will bring insight, don't worry. You have to always lay a nice foundation, a strong one, in order to build a strong house. You got to go down in the ground to dig a foundation and find what they call bedrock. Yeah. You pour your concrete on that, then you began the course. Uh, you can't start a foundation with wood. It's not going to work. It's going to rot eventually. Yeah. It must be based upon the chief cornerstone that man has rejected. That our minds reject. That our concepts and our attitude uh, and our emotions reject. Yoshua HaMashiach. You know that any time there's a word of Musa, a correction, rebuke, we reject that, don't we? Sure we do. The pillars of Yah, the strength of Yah, based upon the prominent, uh, uh, prominent uh, manifestation of his mishpatim uh, and his uh, sadiqa, his judgment and his righteousness. And we despise those great pillars of strength. Who shall be found written in the book? Quickly, verse 4. This is what the Melach, the strong Melach says unto Daniel. He says in verse 4, but you, O Daniel, he tells him to shut down. He said, shut. Shut. You close it. You cause the wisdom to be kept close. You confine that wisdom. That is what we call the secret orders of the world. They shut down. They close off their ritual rites and the knowledge that pertains unto the ways of their activities. That's why I say damn the new world order, masons, eastern stars. Uh, these are children of hell. These are children of hell. The Club of Rome and all of them, uh, the World Council of Religion, damn them all. I don't apologize. Uh, he commands the messenger of Yah. He says, I want you to shut up. I want you to uh, shut up the words to understand the clarification of this W O R D S. Uh, it is the Dabarim. And the Dabarim of Yah are the promises. Uh, the promises of Torah from the Bereshit of all things. He said, shut up the words. No new words, Yisrael. The words are the same, Yisrael. He said, I want you to shut down. I want you to shut up the words. I want you to shut up the words. Up the words. He says, and I want you to down. I want you to seal them. These are the seals that only the revelation of Yahshua Hamashiach can break. Did he not talk about, talk about in verse 1, those that are written in the book of life? 
Was there not an idea or a majestic milak that come, came to Yakahana? And is not this one that stands for Yisra'ya? Is he not Mikhaya? Is he not a strong milak and ach milak? Does he not stand for Yisra'ya? Does he not omad endure, keep his position and his place? Is not that the one that? And so the revelation of this, it is, uh, it is concise and precise as to what Yakahan said. And as the forerunner of Yakaharan, one called Daniel, the messenger, the prophet, the mighty one of Almighty Yah. He said, I want you to seal up the book. Why? For the time of the kids. The end, the Akharith, and one, as the strong Melak proclaimed, who is able to open the seal. And there was no man. The revelation truth of Yah is not brought about by the instinct of a man. It is revealed by the Ruach and the power of his truth. And Yah is not going to entrust any man that doesn't labor in this Torah. When a man has more time for every kind of little damn trinket, but he has no time for Yah. And you think Almighty Yahweh is going to reveal unto him uh, the magnificent power of his Torah. You think if you work on a job, they're going to promote you when they know you're lazy? When they know you're shiftless? They know the one that's working hard. Uh, they see the one that is laboring. Uh, they see the one that is sincere. You think he's going to promote you? Not so, my friend. I'm going to tie it all together. Don't worry. He said, even the time of the end, he tells us that many shall run to and fro. They're going, everyone. I need to go down to Brazil and teach the people what a lion. I'm going to Africa and find the remnant. What? A swine. I'm going to Europe for missionary work. What? A dog. So knowledge shall run to and fro. They shall run to and fro. And also the knowledge shall increase. Shaul writes about that. He talks about how knowledge shall be increased, the da'at. But they will never be able to come to the da'at, the understanding, the skillfulness of Torah. Never able coming to the knowledge of truth. We're not a nation of people that's able to come to the knowledge of truth. That's why we need the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. And that mind must be accomplished in us, developed in us. It must be a sa. It causes us to do the great pleasures of Almighty Yah. Our minds don't give a damn about the Most High. Our minds own our own pleasures and our own desires. That's all we give a damn about. And we frankly don't give a damn about that. Seal it up. There shall one that shall arise. And the ruach of that one, if your sure is in us, if greater is the power of this witness of Torah in us, we love to quote that, don't we? Then where's the revelation of the chazon, of the precise teaching of the prophecy of Torah? Where is it? I find something so distasteful among this generation. Two things. We don't ever want to say we're wrong. And we think we know everything. I do Barak Yad that he has blessed me with the ability to say, I'm ignorant. I don't know. I was talking to Arazak King David, precious man up there in Baltimore. I really like and love the, uh, I really do. He makes it a point that we will talk to refresh one another. He says to me, every time I talk to you, and he doesn't talk much when we talk because he wants to listen to me. He says, I learned so much, Re'ak. 
He says, I have no sense of pride because when I don't know, I just don't know. And I am appreciative for the great insight that Yah grants unto you. Well, that doesn't swell my head. I replied to him. I said, my Zakin, I worked in one of the largest corporations in the world. And it was one thing that I was never ashamed to say. I made the rent. Oh, no, not you. You don't be silly, man. I'm not offended because I'm ignorant. You can teach me. But a man is so wise, he can't be taught. He's a fool. So I would tell them, I am an ignorant man. And because I was ignorant, and because I was honest, then the delicacy of the teaching was so helpful and insightful to me. Because I didn't pride myself as though that I know. Because I did not know. When I talk to Zakim McDonald out there, I never talk. I let him talk. Because the man is very insightful. And he pull out Torah, he tells you. Now, if you see the pattern here in Yakahan 5.3, yeah, he says, I want you, when you go home, search. And he doesn't have a book before him. This is how this man talks. He doesn't stutter with his language. His language is precise. It is an orderly language. And his talk is that way. And yet the man says, I love you, Riyak. And I love his speech. I love his wisdom. I love his insightfulness and the knowledge of Torah. You don't find men like him. I said, oh man, send me some tapes. We put on the station. Well, he's a type, he loves to just open up his heart because he's been around for a long time in the 60s, y'all began to deal with the man. You understand? So he is not some fly by night. Eh? Believe me. So if you sit, if he comes, you elderly ones, don't try to show him what you know. I'm just being honest now. Just listen. And then you may learn. If you're going to listen to some young nutheads that come through here, you better listen to him. That is right. Hallelujah. So this book that Yakahan, he is expressing this chazun, this great revelation that shall be revealed. And only one can reveal it. If one does an autobiography, it means that that one is the author, right? If one has a biography written for them or she, that means that someone has wrote it. But if you do an autobiography, you are the author of that essence. Well, who is the author of this book? Well, here's a statement that one makes. The one that is able to open the seal, it is somewhat arrogant. Can I read it for us? But unless there's a witness of this profoundness in the better sheet, it's not worth its weight in paper to be written on. In the book of Ibram, in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, one verse, it says Hebrews 10, 7, Hebrews 10, 7, then I saw, I declared, I spoke with volume, Hebrews 10, 7, then said I, with an arrogance. He says, I come, I enter in, I bow, I come uh, in the Michgila, in the volume of the book. And he had a book in his hand that no man. He said, I come in the Michgila, the straw, the writing, the volume, the substance. Now that's a statement. That is the profound utterance he uh, spoke that. He said, I come at the volume of the book. Uh, it is written of me uh, to do your great pleasure, to do your hafiz, what please you, oh yeah. Now the book, he come in the volume of the book, and the book is written of him, uh, that it sounds like an autobiography to me. It sounds like an autobiography that the Chadosh men, they moved by the Ruach HaKodash and they wrote by the pinsmanship of the author of the book. So he declares that he comes in the volume. He comes in the Mechgila, 
In the scroll, the substance of the scroll, it is him, it is written of him. And the only way that the revelation of that can be opened, gala, made known, revealed to understand, to give us insight in the author, that they find what it is, he must give us revelation of that. That's why we have taken lightly the word of Yah. We don't ponder it and we don't love it. We will die in our damn wickedness. He says, written to me. Well, my friend, Barnabas or Shaul, whoever wrote this, unless a testimony, a witness, it must be established in the mouth of at least two. With just that alone, it's not worth its weight in a copper penny. We must always. He came in the volume. You cannot express the power of this truth without understanding the volume of the book. Well, let me see if I can find a prophecy of this exact wording. It says in the book of Tehelium, Psalms. Now this is one or this prophecy, Psalms chapter 10, that expressed this powerful work of redemption. If you read that in Gilyana, it is expressed who is able when the seals are opened to redeem this nation. How are they going to be redeemed? What shall be the resolve of that nation? To Helium, Psalms chapter 40. Let's see if this is the witness of the statement here in Hebrew, Hebrews. To Helium 40 verse 7. Then said I, then said I, lo, I come, Psalms 40 verse 7. He says, I come in the Megillah, I come in the volume of the book because it is written of me. Now that book that's, that the Melak says that no man was worthy. There was no one that was easier to open. Believe me, in my bath, every man is not able uh, and worthy to open the book. Yet there arose one from the tribe of Yehuda, the loin, the, the tribe of the Eri, the lion. The tribe of great strength. The one that will eviscerate every kind of obstacle against Almighty Yah. Strong men of great strength, physicality, maturity. They have been nurtured in the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. We got to cast down these vile imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the power of his Sadiq. I want someone to talk like this to me in this hour. I don't want nothing sugar-coated. I don't like anything sugar-coated anyway. Put the sugar inside. I don't want nothing sugar-coated. Don't, don't sprinkle no sugar on nothing for me. The prophecy of David. Yoshua speaking in the first person. The book is written of me. It is written. It is hatta. It is katta. It is inscribed with every characteristic of me. I am the Torah, I am the Word. It is vitally important that you understand what is in the book. We have a false perception of what is here. We have been lied to by this vile, dirty whore that she has sucked the teeth, the titty of Catholicism known as Christianity and Judaism and all of these lies we are bought into the lies. That's why we question everything. See, a whore will always question her man. A dirty whore will always question her man. Even though a man is not doing anything, she has no solid proof as the man that, that is not faithful, but she's going to question that. She's going to accuse him of every damn thing that her wicked mind thinks. And that's how we accuse Yah, Yisrael. And so every messenger, we got to question him. We don't question the sanity and the purity of our own identity and how faithful we are, but we want to question someone else. 
Well, he did me wrong. I quit crying like a little effeminate boy. Stand up. Be counted for. Yah says to Yahushua, get up off your belly. Quit crying for that damn house. He says, stand up and be a man. You need to stand up, man. Man has that physicality. Ain't nothing like a beautiful man. He doesn't have to have the Samsonite. I don't see what the Torah says that Samson had muscles like that. I, I just, I don't see that. You understand? He had the strength, just like the mighty Melach. He had the strength of the wisdom of the Ra. Hallelujah. You see, this Herculean image is the created God, a lie. His strength was in the covenant. He was a Nazarene. That's what it was. And so they show this individual that represents Hercules, this God, when they make their damn lying movies. Talk to me. It is correct. His strength, and that's the strength of Yisra'ya. I'll prove it out, my daughter, please. Bear with me. It is the strength of the Bereshits, of the Berith, the Brit, the covenant with our forefathers. Yeah. And that's the truth. Can I proceed a little further? Yeah. Hallelujah. He comes in the volume of the book. So you think the book began with Yokoharan? Well, I'll show you where the book begins. The concept, and not the beginning of the book, was some of the acts of the book. Quickly in the writings of Shemoth, Exodus chapter 24, and for expedience, Yisraeliah, I want to drop down to verse 4. This is when the Abba called Moshe into the Zah, the high place, the mountain, the place that he was separated from the nation, the house of Yisraeliah. And the people that, when he came down, they promised that they would be obedient unto Almighty Yah. I hear that, and I've heard it countless of times. You show someone the error ways and the ways of the era, and they will say, well, I'm going to obey. And they condescend back to the same actions and activities. That's a double-minded individual. The mind is becoming duplicit because they don't, and they cannot determine what's right and wrong. When you find people like that, they're unstable. Their ways are unsure. They will say anything and they will carry out any activity that their silly little minds conjure up. And so here you are, as he and Moshe were along. Yah just doesn't open this book to every man. You understand? He begins to reveal unto him the essence of this great book, the book of the Berith, Exodus 24.4, hallelujah. People love to hear revelation with some of these kind of uh, esoteric type stories uh, that they're phantom beyond uh, Star Trek and all of that damn foolishness uh, is silly. And they're so dumb, they buy it. I'm bringing you the gala, the opening uh, of the lacha, of the doctrine of this truth, uh, of the book. Listen to this in Exodus chapter 24, verse 4. And Moshe, he wrote all the words of Yah. He did not miss anything. He wrote everything that Yah commanded. He wrote all the word of Yah. And he rose up early in the morning and he built, Moshe built there a mitzbeach, an altar, a high place under the hill. And he placed 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Yisrael. Yas will next Shabbat. I want to teach that. Twelve pillars and the might of Yah in your shoe. If I have time, I began studying that this morning. 
but I don't know if I have time. With the workload, I got a lot of work next week. You understand? A lot of work. And when Moshe had done that, he sent Naha young men of the children of Yisrael, which offered burnt offerings, uh, and the Zadak, they offer up that which was uh, commanded unto them uh, to offer up uh, the Shalom offerings of the oxen to Omariya. That's why in the bed of Shalom, there were engravings of oxen and eri of the shore because it represented the strength, the magnitude, not only of the 12 tribes, 12 lions in that house, and two lions that led up the stair because it represented not only the dividing of the house, but the power of Arabah in his revelation that shall be revealed in Yahshua HaMashiach. So he had to come as the lion, the eri of the tribe of your yeah. Yeah. He sent the young man to offer up oxen. Verse 6. And what Moshe did, he took half the blood and he put it in a basin. And half of the blood, uh, he zarak. Not what the Methodists do with the sprinkling of water. He zarak abundantly, he sprinkled, or he dashed and he covered. He sprinkled the blood on the misbeach, the high place of great strength. Your sure is our elevation or our place of great strength. Yeah. Yeah. He is the revelation. Yes. In verse 7 here, this is the catalyst here. And he took, and he took, and he took the book. The same book that Yakahanan talked about. There's one book I want Yah to reveal and to open up. I'll read that as I conclude, all right? And he took the book of the Berith, the covenant, the alliance, the treaty, the heart of Yah, he took this book and he read it in the ordinance of the people. Why would Yahshua even open the book? Who is able to break the seals uh, and to cause that which is written to speak? He caused Moshe to speak. And in this time, uh, Yahshua is going to speak. Yah, the voice of Yah. That's why Arazakin has warned us. When Yah speak, the mountains, the, they tremble, and the great cedars of Lebanon, they bow down, the mighty men, the strong men. Uh, he causes his voice to resonate by the voice uh, of Moshe. And in this day, Yah is going to speak. Uh, his living Torah is going to speak. Uh, and that same living Torah is of the covenant of his people, Yisra'ya. It says, and he read it in the audience of, a, of the people, and they said, as we will say, all that Yah has said, uh, all that he has commanded us, we will, uh, as, uh, we will do. We will fashion ourselves accordingly. Uh, we will walk accordingly to what he has commanded us. Uh, and then they said, we will be shemach. We will be obedient. We will do it with great delight. Are we a nation of people that's obeying what is written in the book of the covenant? We're not obeying what is written in the book of the covenant. We're obeying what is written uh, in the corruption of our own hearts. That's why men can speak today without substance of the book. The book must be open, Yisrael. When that book was opened unto the house of Yisrael, they feared. And unless the book is opened in this hour, we're not going to have any fear. They feared and they said, all that he commands us to do, all that he instructs us to do, we will do, we will us, uh, we will fashion ourselves, uh, we will fashion our lives, our children, everything, and we will shema, we will hear, we will train ourselves to hear and to obey. And so the book is not being opened today. The power of Yahshua HaMashiach 
has been displaced with the damn lie of Jesus. We want to hold on to the damn relics of Jesus. It is the damn lie, Israel. Damn every Jesus, every Christ, and every vile God. He doesn't share his honor with anyone. I'm glad of that. And I'm not fearful to say it. You're not going to talk that damn Jesus talk to me and pollute me. You're not going to be praising no Lord around me. I was just a lie. You understand what Baal is? Which Lord you praising? Your landlord? Your drug Lord moving out of your community? I'm going to talk, all right? I don't want to go in that direction. But I will not back down. Hallelujah. Who could give us such great insight of the last time like Hanak? I want to read what Hanak says about the book, all right? He prophesied about a time that shall be, and he talks about the Acharif, what things were sealed up, what things are, are confined until this time. You hear people say, well, you know, the world is, is changing everywhere. And you know, it's the end time. You liar. One said that to me. Other said, you don't believe that. I said, uh, I got too much to do. I got to go to the garden tomorrow. I got to do this. I got to do that. Uh, just to show him how foolish he was. Because the man did not believe it. Everyone says that. So you know, there is no, there is no evidence to it. Proof because when the wickedest of men can say it, uh, and the most stupidest of men said, you know, they don't know a damn thing. Well, the, the book said it would be like that. Where did it say that? Yeshua yeah. sure says even to the scribes of the Pharisees, uh, you can discern the face of the sky. You can tell when it's going to rain, when it's going to snow. You damn dumb jackasses. Uh, you can't even discern the time of the coming uh, of Yeshua HaMashiach. So when the wicked say that, you know it's wrong. When the wicked, when they rely upon that as a strength of their knowledge of Torah, you think about that? So I said to the individual, I got too much work to do. I got to get to garden next week. I got to weed. I got to pick. Man, I got, I got to build a building. I got to do that. And you know what he did after I said all that? Who knows what he did? Can I tell you? He lied. Oh, we laugh. We mock. Yeah. He laughed at me. It was worth laughing at. Because he was silly. He didn't know what he was saying. And that's a fact. Yeah. This is what we see because it's raining here. When Yah alters the heavens, the world is going to tremble. It's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. The earth is going to tremble when he talks. This, this is a nothing here. Rain, stop that. I said to, to the individual, I'm going to enjoy these cool nights here in July. We used to 100 degrees at this time of the year. Hot, dry. It's cool like this. I said, there's no end of the earth. Not now. So this great messenger, I want to move in this with some speed, all right? as I would say, expeditiously, to excavate every stone and to turn over every stone, especially the stone that, uh, that is at the Shahadu gate of your wicked mind and your heart. Hanak, Enoch, the book of Hanak, Enoch chapter 1, verse 1. It says here that the Berakiah, the blessing, how many men are able to pour blessing upon Yisraya? We think because we challenge one another and we think we can talk, when a man receives the berakaya or the blessing, it brings life to a man. When a man just talk and his talk is non-essential, it is of no value. I don't want to hear that. When a wise man talks, then the ears of the simple are drawn attentively unto a wise man's conversation. And so the blessing of Hanukkah with which he blessed the elect. That's all he blessed. Now, I want to show you one of the most profound blessings of this, this blessing of Hanak out of the book. That's why, Yisrael, yeah, you but we better get some fear of Yah. Yeah. Which he blessed the elect and the Sadiq, 
who would be present now, not those with him, uh, but they would be present on the day uh, of the Sarah, the great tribulation, or the day of tribulation, at the time of the removal of all the wicked ones, those that are practicing Risha or the Rasha. And one that are criminals against Yah. They're already down, Yisraya. They're already condemned. Nothing is going to save them, whether you buy it or not. Whereby Yah shall assault the wicked one. So Yahshua opens the book for us that we may fear and understand it is a terrible thing to fall into Yah's great and mighty hands. It is not something you take lightly. That's why you don't practice sin. You don't see the ills of your own wickedness whereby you can confess your sin. I hate a Jezebel and a lying uh, dog of hell uh, that think that they have risen above everyone uh, and everyone is against them and they are doing right. You're not doing one damn thing right, woman. Uh, man, shut your wicked mouth. And I'm being persecuted. You're not suffering for righteous sake. You're not suffering because you love you. Yeah? You're suffering because you're wicked. My suffering doesn't come because I'm Sadiqa, because I'm a damn wicked man. More damn lust draws me away. You damn hypocrites to say. Oh, the brothers treat me wrong. You hypocrite. You don't even know how to treat a brother. Oh, the sisters, they don't like me because I'm spiritual. You're not a spiritual woman. Hell, you have no, you have no intuition of what is spiritual. Because if you were, you would be quiet and you would teach young women how to love their husbands, uh, show them how to keep their damn house clean. Uh, how can you show them that when your damn house is filthy? You will go to hell as far as I'm concerned. Uh, teach them how to love their husband, how to train their children. You are running your damn mouth and think you're some spiritual. You're a damn Jezebel. That's what you are. I don't give a damn who you are, woman. Uh, why did I say that? Sometimes I go off. He blessed us. Hanak. He blessed the elect, the Bohir, with the great blessing, those that will be present. Shaul says, not all shall sleep. We're all not going to sleep. And some shall be here. Oh, I know we'll say, oh, I want to be here. You don't even want to be here with them to the small, minute things. You... Hypocrite. I want his will to be done. Whatever pleases you, John. Hallelujah. You'll find out how strong you really are, won't you? Verse 2 of Hanak 1. He says, and Hanak, it called him a blessed and a righteous man of Yah. He took up the parable or the marshal. The speech of great wisdom, Hanak went to of great wisdom, uh, and he did this while uh, his eyes were uh, gala. They were open his eye in uh, the power, the ability to reveal unto thee like uh, the preciseness uh, of what shall be. You understand? His eyes, his eye in were opened, uh, and he saw. And he said, this is a Kodash vision. This is a Hazon. This is a prophecy. This is precise. And every word is precise. And every word that I speak is wise. He gives us the vision. He said, this is a Hazon. This is the vision. He said, it has come from the Shemaim, the heavens. Which, which the Melachim. Not just a melak. The messengers of Yah as they guard it, even those melakim, as Daniel Yah prayed for 21 days, and then the messenger, the one that stands for Yisraya, as he, as he came to bring this profound revelation, he was, exalt, he was assaulted by the prince of the powers of this world. And he was circumvented. Yet, Daniel prevail with great perseverance. Yeah. That the book, he learned by the way of the books, what Torah says, uh, what the book of Daniel says. Uh, 
And he understood the vision by the ways of the books. You understand, Yisraeliah? It says, uh, and the, the Melachim showed him, and I heard uh, from them everything. He heard from them everything, and he said he understood. He said, I look not. I look not for this generation. This is not for those of my time. He said, but for the distant one that is to come. There is one generation. Whereby the book shall be opened. And those that are the elect, the power of the testimony of Yeshua. And this living Torah shall be the strength that shall sustain them. Nothing else. Your Jesus is going to let you down, my friend. Your Holy Ghost is going to run to the gates of hell. I heard everything and I understood and I looked not to the generation but for the distant one. Not the distant ones, but the distant one that is come. I speak. I prophesy. I are saw about the elect ones concerning them. The book was open for the elect ones and concerning them. So what are you telling us, Hanak? Did Yakahan speak what you spoke when he saw the book open? Well, we shall proceed. He says, and I took up, verse 3, I took up with a parable, saying, this is what my wisdom of the Mashiach, of the Mishli spoke unto me. He says, Almighty Yahweh, yeah. He says, you are the one of the universe. He calls him the Kodash and the Great One. You understand? He shall come forth out of his dwelling. We're in this time where he's coming out. And when he stands up like any king, when the king stands up, the subjects always come to the king and stand. But when this great one stands up, war unto the nations of the earth. And if we think we're getting by, watch what the book says. He says, and from there... He will march upon Mount Sinai and appear in his camp emerging from the heavens uh, with a mighty power. He says, and everyone uh, shall be afraid. And those that watch for the nation, they shall shake and quiver. Men don't shake today. We don't shake. We don't quiver at all. We're not afraid. We're silly. We love jocularity. Men don't quiver. When you find a watchman, you find one that watches for the house of Yisrael. Yeah? You find men that are very sober. They're serious. You don't find that today. He looked to find one man that cried out against uh, wickedness and found no man. Menobi Yeskel. When he looked and saw what they were doing in the house of Yah, every kind of damnable, deplorable thing, uh, that's what's happening among his nation. He said, everyone shall be afraid, and the watchmen shall quiver. A great yare and trembling shall seize them. When, when fear sees you, there's nothing you can do. It shall seize them unto the ends of the gates of the earth. He talks about those in great authority and the great power, mountains. The similitude of those that uh, of great substance, mountains uh, and high places will fall down uh, and they shall be frightened. Those are stones and mountains. He's talking about those uh, of the hubris state of mind uh, and arrogance. They're going to fall down and be frightened. And the high hills, uh, those that have built the strength of their gods. Uh, and they've exalted their gods like the Jew god, uh, the Greek god, the Christian god, the Catholic god, the black god, the damn wicked white god, the damn wicked Mexican god, the damn wicked Jewish god. They've built their gods. Uh, they've elevated their offerings unto their gods. Uh, Upon the high places, the mind they shall be but made low, and they shall melt like honeycomb before the flame, before the ush of Yah. It's amazing that he identifies his power of his word and his flame almost is A Y S H by I S H. Ush is enunciating the same. Ush, 
<laughs> He's talking about a man. Man has fired him. A boy doesn't have fire. Man has the fire of life in him. Everyone is not a man. Because they have the similitude that doesn't make them a man. That's a fact. Hallelujah. He says, and the earth, the Olam, shall rent asunder. And all that is upon the earth, he says, they shall perish. They shall turn from Yah. They won't know which way to go. And he says this, I want you to hear this, and there shall be a judgment upon all. You all see that? Upon all, including. 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 Including the sadiq, those that have been justified in all. If we been the sadiq, shall scarcely make it. Well, said the wicked, we that are criminals, we know we're doing something and we know it's absolutely wrong. We know we're infringing upon Torah and we deal with such callousness of heart and we think that there is no retribution to us. He said, all shall be judged. And he wanted to make it precise. That's why the book was opened. To bring about warning that we may fear Yah. That we may understand the reprieval we have uh, through this revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, all shall be judged. And I want you to understand, including, including the Sadiq, those that believe that they are righteous. If the righteous shall scarcely. And we know all about damn hypocrisy. We think we're doing right. You're not, we're not even scarcely doing right. What shall the end? And what shall be of the wicked, those that obey not the Torah of Yah? Well, we're not doing an excellent job in obeying the Torah. Yeah, yeah. A man like Haraki bless the nation of Israel. Yeah. And every wise man should bless the nation. His speech. He doesn't waste words. I tell people, you don't have to tell me the same thing over and over. I hear what people say. I know I explain things over and over because most of the times people don't hear they don't have the ability to comprehend. You tell them one thing, uh, and they perceive it. If you don't understand, ask. Uh. Well, I thought, well, if you thought that's what I said, you didn't hear me. If you thought that's what I said, uh, you did not hear me. It's amazing. You can remember everything I say, but you never remember what you say. Did I say that? You silly jackass, you know you said it. Can't go around. And you think we're going in? I just have one thing to hold on to. I won't tell you what it is. Maybe at the end. Hallelujah. He goes on to reiterate verse 8. He says, and to all the Sadiq, all those that are truly Sadiq, all those that are Tommy, he will grant unto them Shalom. Isn't that what it says? Yes. Well, how do you know that those that are Sadiq? The Torah, Yah says he will grant unto them Shalom. David said, you mock a perfect man. You mock a man that is Tommy, man that is complete, his wisdom in Torah is sufficient. He says, for the end of that man, in the midst of all of his great agony, for the end of that man is shalom. Yes. So we have no perfect man. We don't trust in anyone. We are a debilitated people, Yisra'ya. Yes. 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 And the reason our young men that are strong though, do not have the, uh, the kazaz and the strength of uh, maturity because we as the elderly ones, uh, we've been as silly as hell. We have not been honest with ourselves. We have not done righteously. Yeah. Yeah. 
The homes are broken up because hell, we don't have any men guarding the gate. We are boys. Men like mama, they want to sit around and talk to mama. I want to talk to daddy. They don't want to talk to mama or daddy. They want to talk to mama. They don't want daddy's counsel. They want mama's counsel. They don't enjoy the presence of daddy. They want to talk to mama. And mama has made them weak. And they sim it out. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. I just ain't taking nothing back, old man. I was going to not. I was going to not take nothing back. That's a fact. So the mother has taught them her effeminate ways. She has rebelled against the strong one. We have rebelled against Yah. She has taught the boys to act like her. They want to walk like mama. So when daddy comes home, he, they don't see the strength of his resolve. He is the man. You understand? We are his bride. I want to finish this Achusipia. It says here in verse 8, And all the righteous, and to all the righteous he grants alone. He will preserve the elect. Ah, that's a comfort to us. He's going to preserve us even through all of the great agony. And love kindness shall be upon them. They shall all belong to Almighty Yahweh, and they shall prosper and be blessed. Ah, we shall uh, shalak. We shall prosper in the wisdom of the Torah. Our ways uh, shall be prosperous. Uh, that should be the strength of a nation. Uh, yeah. and then he gives us this. He says, and the light of Yah, and the light of Yah shall shine upon them. We, we, we need to understand that light, all right? Uh, we're going to get back to Revelation, don't worry. He says, and the light of Yah shall shine upon them. He says, behold, he will arrive with 10,000 of his Kodash ones in order to execute judgment upon all. He will destroy the wicked ones. He will destroy and their censors of all flesh on the account of everything that they have done. He's going to destroy Yisrael. And he says that which the sinner and the wicked ones commit against him, who is able to open the book. Harak says, and the light of your shell shine and the light of Yah shall shine unto us who is able who is a dear and there one stood up and the majestic power of Yah who is this one and he was able to open and to break the seals that which Daniel Yah even from that day was sealed up until the time of the end of the gates this light, I want to draw attention unto that because it's vitally important to understand. The light of Yah shall shine. Look at this disclosure as Yahshua spoke unto the most prominent minds of his era in the book of John, Yakaharan, chapter 8, verse 12. John 8, 12, Then Yahshua spoke again to them, saying, I am the light of the Olam. Hanak says, and the light of Yah shall shine unto who? The elect? The elect? Yahshua declares that I am the light of the world, and he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. That individual shall have the light of light, shall have the maor, the rejoicing of the power of life, uh, the high, the light, the strength of life. Uh, he shall raise, he shall be raised up uh, with this vibrant essence uh, of this living life. What is the living life? Is he not the word? Was he the word made flesh? Is that not the revelation of all things? Is everything that God reveal or uncover, is it not revealed by his word? Sure it is, Yisrael. Sure it is. And to understand the dynamics of what Yahshua says, here 
Shalomo speaks with a greater edification uh, that identifies with the witness of Yahshua in Proverbs, Mishli, chapter 6, verse 23. Proverbs 6, 23. He said, for the mitzvah, the commandments, uh, is a near, is a lamp. And the Torah is light. And the Torah is light. And the Torah is light. Yoshua said, I am the light. I am the ore. I am the ma'or. I am the rejoicing. And the Torah is light. And the reproof of the instructions of Torah, it brings us into the derrick or the way of high, of life. We produce life. And it causes life to flow from our bosom. Did not Hanak said, and the light of Yahshua shine unto them. The revelation. When one sleeps in the darkness of night. And when one sees the light. The light shines doesn't it? It alters the whole uh, characteristics of one. One is not as dormant when the light shines is it? We need the light of Torah to shine Yisrael. He is the Torah, and the Torah is a book of judgment. It is a book that brings us insight to what sin is, and it is a book that reveals the power of Yah when He stands up from His throne. We need to understand that. It is no time that we play around and in our ill religious activities, and the simple fact we don't give a damn about anything. We need to grow up, Yisraya. And we that are the older ones, we need to make a, a, a radical change. Yeah. And the young ones must see that. Yeah. I don't want to leave an example to my young Achim and Achotim. I don't want to leave an example that I'm not a proven man with my issue. I want to present an image of fidelity, kindness, and love. Hell, that doesn't mean she gets a new pair of shoes every week. It doesn't mean that. I want the joy of her countenance to express. I want the friendliness of her to express the strength of this man. That's what I want. I want my young men to see the beauty of what your commands us loving your wife. As Yoshua Hamashiach loved the assembly. I want my Isha to represent a wife submitting herself unto her husband as she submits unto Almighty Yah. Not some damn stubborn Jezebel that's hard-headed. I don't want her running into everyone's house and everyone's business and chitting, chatting. And that's just a fact. So I want my young Ach, my Achim, to see that if Yah removes me today, at least, I've given everything. No pretense and falsehood. I've given everything that he's given me. And I don't hold it back to exude some kind of superior thinking or wisdom above my Akin. I don't want that. I don't want to hurl something on them to think, see, I know that, do you? No, I tell them that because I want them to know. That's why most men today just posture with each other. They don't know a damn thing. It's just a fact. So it's just a bunch of posturing. I know this, what you know. And this will go get some to come back. And it's of no relevance because, can I say this, my precious Beth? If it was of relevance and substance, you would see a transformation in that one's life. If one says that he or she is a warrior of Yah, then you will see that transformation. You sit in the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they carry themselves. You will see that. I don't care if you don't like me. The time that she says, I don't like you, that's all right. You might as well love me. How about that? If she doesn't like me, as long as she loves me. Look at how quiet we get. 
Can I proceed, my Ach Yosef Yatoda, my friend? The profound wisdom of Shalomo in the book of Wisdom, Wisdom 710. He talks about wisdom. He says, I love her. He says, I love wisdom above health and beauty. Wisdom 710. He says, and I choose to have her instead of light. Now, not the light of Torah, my own ways, what makes me rejoice. This is wisdom 710. Why? Because he says in the next sentence, there's a semicolon there. He says, for the radiant light that comes from her never goes out. See, the wisdom of this revelation of this uncovering by Yeshua, if he uncovers the wisdom of Torah unto us, uh, the radiance of that wisdom never goes out. How can you say you have? That's what it says in the book of wisdom, doesn't it? And if he was talking about the light of Yahshua, the witness of Yahshua, then he would not have a semicola there. And to show you the running of that sentence, uh, to say, and uh, he says, for the radiance of light, of the wisdom, of the power of Yahshua, of the revelation of Yahshua, that comes from wisdom. Uh, that is where it comes from. Uh, the light of Torah comes uh, from wisdom. Uh, he said the light never goes out. So if a man's face is lit by the testimony of the Torah, you see a beauty to a man. You see a beauty. And so when he walks by the bath in the marketplace, uh, she garners the strength. Uh, although he doesn't speak, uh, although he doesn't interact with her, he, she garners the strength uh, just by the ma'o of his face. Uh, who wants to see a damn hideous, broke down face uh, and everything is broke down all the time? I don't want to see that. Uh, even if you're going through, then let the light of Yah shine. Even if you are having pain, let that light. Even if everybody has walked away from you, get up and dance a little bit uh, and sing to Yah. Oh, I sing to Yah. Oh, I sing to Yah. You'll find yourself. We don't do the simple things what He commands us, just simply what rejoice. Well, I'll rejoice. He said it again, rejoice. Ah! That's all right, oh, I rejoice in Yeshua. That's all right, oh, I rejoice in Yeshua. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We get it right. Oh, I rejoice in Yeshua. Day and night, oh, not this false pretense. Of great gladness. Some of us look crazy. Our face look crazy and nutty. He said, I love wisdom because a light never goes out. But a man has a profound wisdom. You will see his spawn. It has a beautiful expression. He doesn't look crazy looking. He doesn't express this befuddled frown and this engraved looked on his face because he looked that way all his life but that's what Shalomo says didn't he he said for a light never goes out yeah. you go to the bed and look at him sleeping they say why is he looking like that because the light of wisdom why is he looking like that because the light of wisdom yeah. don't challenge me all right if you want to deal with the light of wisdom I can deal any aspect that I teach on I can deal with that had someone to write me the other day and say, Ray, I say, preacher man, look, I I'm going to show this to all the Achim. All these Hebrew brothers talking that talk, you made it clear for me. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Here's another one in the book of Shirak. We're talking about this light, the light of Yah. The light of Yah, that Hanak from the book, Shirak 32.16. It says that the fear of Almighty Yahweh shall find true judgment. And what it does, it kindles true, or it kindles and shall kindle true justice as a light. Did I not teach on the justice of the Sadiq of Yah on last week? See, that's what the light or the fear of Yah, that's what it brings. You're sure this this. Revelation of the book of Gilyana, it is about retribution. Uh, it's about judgment. As Hanak teaches from the book and brings us revelation to the light. 
what that has nothing to do with us. Can I reiterate that what I read in Hanak? And I want to read something in Revelation. I'm just going to read a portion of Hanak chapter 1, Enoch 1 verse 8. And the light of Yahweh shall shine unto them. There's only one people that the light of Yahweh is going to shine unto them. And the same one that uh, began this process uh, or began to culminate this in Gilyana Revelation. Uh, he says here in Revelation, turn that quickly, Revelation chapter 21 verse 23. If we are the salt of the earth, we lose our flavor, we are tough for nothing. We are city, are we not? So if your shoe is the light of that city, look what it says in Revelation uh, chapter 21 verse 23. I know that this is the culmination of all things uh, of the kingdom, but the kingdom of Yah dwells in us, does it not? Uh, yeah. He says in Revelation 21, 23, and the city, are we not the city of Yah? It had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it. Uh, for the aura, the beauty, the tefireth of Almighty Yah did light it. Uh, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Uh, your sure is the light. Uh, your sure is the light thereof. Uh, we have the power of that testimony. He opens up the revelation of Torah that our face gleam with that light. We're damn people. If we are city, Zakim so Benjamin calls that all the time. We're city. Nothing else he quotes that. He says the same thing. Don't forget he taught the message the same thing. Play that one today, Ark Simeon, after service. The same thing. Riyak said I said the same thing, so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get up and say the same thing. Yah tells us the same thing. And hell, we are hard-headed as they come. Well, cause this light, as Hanak said, did he not say this is not for this generation, but the generation that is to come? Did he not say that, Yisra'ya? The book must be open. The book must be open, Yisra'ya. We must open the book. It must be gala. It must be open. It must be revealed, the revelation of it. And you stubborn old men, you need to get off of your wickedness and begin to uh, intercede uh, and cry unto Yah that you may get the sense of wisdom and understanding. And you won't know when you got wisdom because the light was shined. You don't have to talk no damn wisdom talk. Everyone will know you got wisdom. You will know who got wisdom. You will see the light. You don't have to prove anything. Your very countenance, uh, your poor name, the light of that wisdom will never go out. It costs your mind uh, to articulate the power or to open up the mysteries of Torah. And silly old men today are full of folly and full of silliness. Uh, and hell, they want to complain about no women uh, and they want to complain about the woman. You need to get yourself right, man. Uh, Y'all not like some of these folks blame everything on the woman. I can't blame everything that I do on my woman. My wife has been right by me. I, I would be a lie if I say she hasn't. She's done right. She stood by me. Hallelujah. That's a fact. <clears throat> she has not made me do things that are against the ordinance of, of our marriage. She has not challenged me to that degree. Maybe I'm just leaving home and... No. Nah. Never. Because when I say be quiet, woman, that's it. You know the first thing I taught her before I married her? She was a pretty thing. She's a beautiful thing now. now I'm, not, I'm just saying this. She had this, my natural brother, she was kind of jive. She was only 20-some years old. She was a silly girl. I'm still silly. Just like I am. Immature. And I didn't even know, as Zachim Ahali, I would say, or Jesus or God. Didn't know nothing. But I knew one thing, you're not going to act that way with me, woman. Because even then I was straight. I was ignorant, but I was straight. And I said, I want to tell you something, woman. I'm going to tell you again. Don't you ever do that with me. I was 155 pounds. I didn't have the strength of the mass I have today 
little old thing. She was a 125 pound little old thing. I said, don't you ever do that. And I mean that. And any time I'm talking with any man, you shut your damn mouth, woman. Don't ever insert yourself in any of my conversations. And I mean that. You see me talking with a man, you go find something else to do. She knew better. Well, the same thing applied to me because I would not insert myself in her conversation. Someone come, okay, I see. I'm good. I'll shoot some basketball now. I don't have time for this. Yeah. That's right, hallelujah. Yeah. You don't have to like me. Yeah. Yeah. Devil doesn't like me. Can I tell you, I don't even like me at times. I get the fussing and talking and fussing. I fuss at me more than I fuss at anyone. I fuss at me all the time. She asked me, what, what, what are you saying? Uh, don't worry about it. I, I know who I'm talking to. If I told you what I'm saying to him, you may not even like it. You may say, he's not that way. Oh, he's worse than that. Move in quickly, Yisraya. Let me move quickly. Again, I want to read that. Hanak says, the light of Yahshua shot unto them. Revelation 21, 23. And the city had no need of light. Are we the city? Are we a city that sit upon a hill? Well, the light cannot be hid. See, all of this uh, is precise, coincides with everything I read. Uh, even it says uh, that when a righteous man, uh, when the radiance of wisdom, the light that comes from uh, wisdom never goes out. And so the wisdom and the understanding of the uncovering uh, of Torah, it shines greatly. And we are sitting where the light emanates from us. Your shoe is the power of that witness of the light in us, Yisraya. We need that testimony. It just can't be some words. Uh, oh, I think I testify. No, no. It must be a life. Uh, it, may, it must be a construct and an order that we live and we walk and uh, we obey. We do. Uh, we delight in it. Yeah. One thing I bless you all for, I've never been righteous enough to say that when I was wrong, I try to justify my wrong. I'm wrong. I mess up on that one. Oh, man, we lost it. Oh, man, that's the result. I thought that would work. I've never been, I've never had that kind of pride to say I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And I'm wrong 100% of the times. I'm never right in my application of anything. Unless the judication of Torah is what my actions or deeds come from. I'm wrong every time because it makes me feel as though I did right by them. So then look at me. No. It's like a filthy nida, a rag from a woman that stink, and she let the rag sit in the sun uh, and pissed on it and everything. All right, I go that way. But you understand the filth and the stench. There's nothing about me that's right, neither you. That's what David said, creating me, y'all. And talk a clean heart. And see, he must renew that. That is not just once on the occasion. That's every second, every day. It doesn't take much for your heart to get filthy. For wicked, evil thought to displace the witness of Yahshua. And people think that they are really right when they're so corrupt and wrong. They really do. Hallelujah. The book of Nahum. I want to finish this, please. Ooh. If I don't finish it, we'll come back one day. The book of Nahum. I want to read this in the book of Nahum. This vision. Nahum chapter 1. The book of Nahum in the Old Covenant. The book of Nahum. The book of Nahum. All right. Nahum chapter 1 verse 1. This gives us a precise wisdom of what the whole book of Revelation or Gilyana is all about. It does. This writing by this nobi that many will call a minor prophet, but he is major because the words he spoke are major to the revelation of what Yakahanan saw. It shows us the great righteousness, the just justification of the great exalted power of our Abba, the Most High, Yah Almighty Yahweh. 
Nahum 1 and 1 says the burden. Nahum. Nahum. Where is that book found? It's in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant. Nahum, the book of Nahum. Not Enoch, but Nahum. Nahum. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 1. It says the burden on the Massah, the great low, the burden of Nineveh. It tells us here, it talks about the book. Does it say the book? The book of the vision? Is not Revelation the book or a book of visions? Were not the visions open up? Is not Revelation a book of visions? Chazon. Preciseness. He says the book of Chazon, the revelation that comes only by the inspiration of Yahshua. Well, how was that so in the day of Nahum? There was no living power or in the person Yahshua, neither he today. But it is the living Torah, the living word. He is the word of Yah. It says the book of the vision. The book of the Hazon uh, of Nahum, uh, the Erchoshchites. Uh, Yah is Chano, he is one that is very angry. And Yah reserve his Naham, uh, and Yah revenges. You think that Yah is revengeful? It says that Yah revenges. In Naham, he gets his vengeance. He's going to repay Yisra Yah. He says this, Yah's. Naham, his revenge, he says that it is furious. It's like a fire. Yah will take vengeance on his adversary, his Sarah, his enemy, those that oppose him. He reserve wrath for his enemies. Who is able to open the book to show us the enemies of Yah? Who is able to open the book of the vision? That you may search your heart to see whether you're an enemy of Yah. He tells us Yah is slow to anger. And he is great in power. And he will not at all, not one iota, he will not acquit. I'm a nice person. You are not nice. You're a corrupt liar. You're sneaky. You're a wicked man. You're a sneaky lying woman. You're just a vile liar. Let's get real. That's our nature. There's not one tough. That's why you're sure when they said to him, there's no one that is tough for Yah. And so if we are, let's use the expression, quote, good, unquote. If we're good, then we are in the image and the mindset of Yahshua Hamashiach. Well, hell, we missed the mark by a long shot. So don't give me that bull. You do good to everyone. You don't even do right by Yah. You don't even obey these commandments to love him and, uh, and do what he commands. Uh, all right? Uh, so don't tell me how, quote, good, uh, unquote, you are. We are not. That's none that's tough. Not one of us. You think your gifts are special? You have no special gift. Hallelujah. Who is the baddest ball player on the planet, they say? Basketball. Abner, can you answer that? A, LeBron, B, Kobe, C, Shaquille O'Neal. Talk so I can hear you, boy. You know who it is. Who is it? Cleveland, show the boy. Who is it? These boys, as much as they play basketball, they know that everyone says that LeBron James is the baddest boy on the planet. He's the baddest one in our stratosphere. You understand? Nobody. He's bad to the bone. Nobody touches him. It's just a fact. He's the baddest ball player there is. He commands presence. His physicality is like nobody else. At his height, his weight, his speed, his size, it is unmatched by men that age and that size. Aerobatic. Come on, I'm drawing the parallel. Who is like unto Yah? That's none. That's none. And so we know we're going to stand before this great king. He's going to judge the wicked and the righteous too. We better get it together according to Torah. 
We better get this light of Torah in our hearts and quit pretending. And quit pretending that we're right and we're so, so right. We're not right. We've all sinned and fallen short. We have fallen. We have failed the expectation of Almighty Yahweh and Yahshua. He will not at all acquit. You will not be free or say you're innocent. The wicked. Yah has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And in the clouds, there's simply the dust of his feet. Now this is what Yokohanan, what he writes of in the book of Giliana of Revelation, in the book. He draws from the same sus substance uh, of Nehum. It's no different, Yisraya. It is of the same book. Because there is only one book. And it is not meant for every man to understand the book. Even the ones that are the powerful men uh, and the ones that the Torah call men, uh, men that are mountains and the, those that reside in the hills. Can I show us an example? Will you believe the book? All right, turn to first, second Kings. Turn to second Kings quickly. The book of second Kings, second Kings, Melechim, second Kings chapter 14. This was during the reign of uh, Amatiah. And what he did not do, what he should have done, he did not destroy the high places whereby they would go and offer the offerings. You must destroy that high mindness and that high attitude and that self-absorbed arrogance. It says here in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, chapter 14, verse 6, it says, and the children, listen to this now, and the children of the Nacha of murders, uh, and the children of the murders, uh, and the children of the murders, uh, Amatsya, he did not kill them. They had sinned. You know that you are a murderer when you what? When you hate your hot, when you hate your ak without a cause. You are a murderer. And that kind of individual should be destroyed. And a messenger, that's why the king is the melacha. And when the king stands to rise for judgment, every heart trembles. So he did not kill the murders according to which is written. Now, everything that Yah is doing is written in the book. So who is able to open the book by Yahshua? Because he is the book, Yisraya. The book, the volume uh, is written of him. Uh, it is the, Mig the Megillah, the writing of the volume, uh, is Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. He did not do that which was written in the book uh, of the Torah. A Moshe. Wherein Yah commanded, saying, The Avad, the Father, shall not be put to death for the children. You're not going to save your children. Nor the children be put to death for their heart. But Yah says, but every man shall be put to death for his own sins. Every man. This is the revelation here. You're going to have to pay the price. Every man is going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Almighty Yah. Every man, everyone, the son is not going to pay the restitution for daddy. And daddy, all of your Sadiq, you're going to barely make it. You're not going to pay the price for your son, your daughter. It's just not going to be, Yisrael. That's why we need the revelation. We need the gala. We need the uncovering of the testimony of Yeshua in our bosom that we may know. That we may know. You have opportunity to do right by Yisrael. We can do right by all men, but there should be a special fra flagrant of love for the house. Yeah. We should know how to live with each other and love each other and to sense the, the sensitivity and the pains of others. Uh. There should never be a dislike. I don't like her. I don't like him. No, I love you, Sarah. Yeah. And the strength of this brother, although it may be prevailed greater than the strength of this brother, his weakness, constant, his weakness, that ox weakness, uh, is of uh, the same nece necessary strength of this one that is very strong. Uh, and we can see the beauty of that. And it's wrong. I hate hypocrites. I've never liked false people. I've never, never, I've always liked real people. Because I've always been real. You both now. I've always been real. 
Now, I'm not someone stupid that speaks my mind because my mind is stupid. There are things that I will not say to this one or that one, but there are things that I'm forthright with to all Yisraya. And we must be that way. Is y'all forthright? He's forthright. He doesn't hold nothing back. See, I will hold things back. Y'all holds nothing back. Hallelujah. We should love our, our, our neighbor as we love ourselves. And don't tell me you love me when you don't even love you. Don't tell me you love your neighbor. When we are self-conceited and wicked. You don't have the testimony of Yahshua in you. I don't care what we say. I don't give a damn what we say. And that's just a fact. I don't care what we say. Even the ones of old, they had a concern for each other. They would take care and look after each other. They would make sure that everyone was well. We don't give a damn about each other. And out there, you, there's no spirit to grant you that. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Yisrael in the same Second Kings, in verse chapter 22. This truth is only revealed to those that it is appointed to. Second Kings. Second Kings 22, 7. Can I show us this out of the book? I'm going to close in a moment, all right? There's much more to this, but I want to read this. It says in the book of Second Kings, in the writing of the Melech, of the Melechim, Second King. We must understand that that book that was opened, it can only be opened and revealed by the appointed one. Every man is not appointed to reveal the book. In every great house, there are different kinds of vessels. Did not our Zakhen Yaramiyah teach us that? Vessels of gold, silver, brass, wooden. He, he described to us how porous uh, uh, the clay vessel. He gave us demonstration. As when he was young, he made this vase. Uh, and when he put it in the kiln, the trial of the heat, then it broke. I experienced the same thing. It was so pretty on the outside, but it was a piece on the bottom. And I kept that thing for many, many years. I mean, when I got married, I still had it. I still had that. You understand? But I was so ashamed because I knew that I did not get the bottom right or the base, and it broke. And it had all that beautiful glaze on it. So he taught us that, Yisrael, yeah? They're vessels of honor, are they not? And they're vessels of dishonor. So that meant that will get dishonor for the sake of Torah, and he has to suffer with that dishonor. I'm not an honorable man, no one honors me. Very few folks that honor me, you understand? And I have no problem with that. We think that we have to be honored all the time. Huh? It's a beautiful vessel to be dishonored. You're going to be hated for all. You're going to be hated by all, man, uh, for the sake of your sure Hamashiach. I love everybody. You're a liar. You don't know how to love everybody. You don't even love you. Let's get real, Yisrael. Yeah, I want to close from here. Second Kings. More to this. Yes, well, I'll pick it up some other day. I'm not going to promise you that. Don't say... I don't know when I'll pick it up, all right. It says in 2 Kings 22, verse 7. It says this now, under Yoshaya's reign. How be it, there was no reckoning or hasab, there was no account. There was no judgment, no reasoning made with them of the money that was delivered into the hand because they acted with Imuna. So in essence, the funds were given for the restoration of the house. And so there was no account given as to how the monies were spent, what was done. But yet there was no work. There was nothing being done that was of any, any great value. And so there was no reckoning with that. And it says then, the, you see who he was? He was just not a Kohan, but he was the Kohan Mikdash. The high, the great Kohan, said unto Shafan, the Shafan was a scribe just like a Baruch with Yeremiah. He says unto him, I have found the book who is able to reveal unto us what this book says. He said, I found the book of the Torah in Bayit 
of the house of Yah. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. Shaphan, Shaphan. And he read it. Who is able to open the book? When the book was opened, did Yahshua read it? He began to read. He is the high Kohan that speaks for Yisrael. He is the one that has gone into the veil of veils. Yahshua. He's going into the veil of our heart. This word gets down into the veil of our hearts. We try to hide ourselves, but the word gets through. Shows us what we are. And Shafan the scribe, he came to the Melach, he came to Yoshaya, the king, and brought the Melach word again. He came to speak to the king and said, he says, your evidence, your servants, have gathered all of the money that was found in the house and had delivered it into the hands of them that do the work, that have oversight over the house, or be it young. It goes on to say, and Shafon, the stride, See, even the Melach didn't know. He showed the Melach, the king, saying, Helchiah the Kohan has delivered me a book. Did not the Melach deliver a book? He brought forth a book, sealed with the seals of Yah, with the perfect law, the seven seals of the Ruachim, the seal of wisdom, the seal of understanding, the seal of knowledge, the seal of the fear of God. Those are the seven seals that seal this book. What a man as dumb as a jerk as he cannot elaborate on the essence and the power, the dynamics of the book. And he must sit down and, and learn the oracles of Yah as a child. He has brought me a book. And so Shaphon, he read it before the Melach, the king. And it came to pass. It came to pass. You see, Yahshua has revealed something great unto us. He was able to open the seal. See, it is not open unto us because when the Torah is open, the word is open. Let me read. Can I read? It says, and the Melach, and the Melach, it says, uh, and it came to pass in verse 11, when the Melech had heard the words of the book, again the book of the Torah, that he, chara, he rent his clothing. We are not tearing the clothing of this flesh and this wicked flesh that drape us. We're not renting that. He tore his clothing. And believe me, he fell before Yah. He rent his clothing, and the Melach, he commanded Hilchaya, the Kohan, and also Acham, the son of Shaphan, and Achboa, the son of Mikah, and also Shaphan, the scribe, and Achaya, a servant of the Melach, saying, go run. And I want you to darash, I want you to inquire, you must seek this with great prayer, with worship and one darash. It is sought with prayer and great perseverance. He said, I want you to inquire of Yah for me. I can't get through. I don't understand the power of the book. Although he was the one that was exalted to the throne of David, he was Yoshai. Yeah. He said, you inquire of Almighty Yah for me. And for the people, and for all Yahuda, concerning the words of this book that is found. When we find the treasures of this book, we must have men, as they would say, prayer warriors, and men that inquire and seek Yah for the knowledge of the record of this book which we found. This is it. He says, for great, for great. Is that what? Yuliana about, he says, for great is the Chama, the wrath. Great is the wrath of Almighty Yahweh that is kindled against us. 
that is kindled against us. Because our, our, our fathers have not listened to the words of this book. So we have listened to the word of the book. To do according to all that is written concerning us. That's what the revelation of the book is. To reveal unto us what we must all do. This book is concerning Yisra'ya. The wicked is found among the house. The wicked that rejected Yah was found among Yisra'ya. I'm going to stop just like that. Hallelujah. It was found among his nation. And so this revelation only comes through Yahshua HaMashiach. We need to get real, Yisra'ya. We can continue to procrastinate and pretend that we love him. Woe unto us. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. You that have joined us, greetings to you all. We do pray that the simplicity of this truth uh, warn your heart today. Whether you concur with it or not, it, it really makes no difference at all. I'm not going to allow this wicked generation to, to upset me and to uproot me from truth. I don't care what they say. And what I say is so simple that even the simplest of men and women can understand. They can because I deal with the very nature, I deal with the very nefesh, the very laba and, and, and the very lavim or the love of man. I deal with the essence of, of what we are, who we are. See, the book is written and it only can be revealed by the power of the testimony. So we need that testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach. We need that and we need to get real. And the wisdom of Yah, the wisdom of Yah caused a man's face to shine. And the light never goes out. He doesn't look crazy looking. So glad to see you, my friend. He doesn't look dumb looking. And the beauty of his wisdom emanates in his face. And that's just the truth. Hallelujah. You go in a place, you can tell a rich man from a poor man because his skin looks different. May Yah strengthen us all. May cause his light, the light of your Shur HaMashiach to rest upon us. This light never goes out. And when we truly become that city of Yah, we become the eminence of Yerushalayim, the light will always shine. The light of wisdom, the light of understanding, the light of the fear of Yah. We're not so easily disthroned, we're not so easily shaken. We're not so easily moved. Our strength is because Yah changed, that we the sons of Yah hope, we're not consumed. That's the reason. He made a promise unto Abraham Yitzchak. Yaakov, he's going to save that remnant, that house. It is going to take a trial that is beyond our ability to perceive, to understand how we're going to overcome. And then when we overcome, we're going to sing the song. That's why we need to rejoice now. We need to learn how to rejoice in Yah. We need to learn how to come before His presence and delight and assembling ourselves to pray. We need to learn how to do that. We need to learn how to make a joyful noise and all of that unto Yah. We don't, we don't know how to do that. And we all the ones, we're getting sick as hell. That's why he didn't take the old ones over. Because we're becoming so damn sick and silly and nutty. That's a fact. We don't want to labor for y'all. We all the men, we're just so immature. It's sad. You're not talking to me. Ah, oh, stop it, silly man. We're immature when it comes to the things of Yah. His people, they're wise to do evil, but to do tough, they know not. You know how to do stuff that is silly and dumb when it comes to doing right. We don't know that. That's what the book says. You challenge Yah then. We are selfish people. We are an ignorant people. We are stupefied people. You think you're beyond that? That expression of superlative and superlatives that Yah expressed of you, that's what you are. There's nothing great about you. Your flesh is rottening, you dying, we all are. I said to my shoulders, I said, she said, What's wrong? I'm getting old, baby. I'm getting old. I don't know. I'm just getting old. I'm just getting. Ah, that's right. You better shake that head up and down. I said, I'm getting older. And the flesh rots. It's going to die. Let nobody kill you. You're going to die. Well, I want to be around when he comes. Die. Hardly will you be around. You can't even do what we're going through now. You think you're going to endure. Nah, best for him to take you on it. 
how I got over, oh, how I got over. Oh, my mind looks back and I wonder how I got over. Y'all greet you all. Come on, Zakane. Send an offering to help us. Please do that. Send an offering. Send a wonderful gift to be a great strength unto the works here that we can proceed in your sure name. Yah brak So to Yahweh for another Shabbat. Another day he has brought us to live to see. And another day he has given us his Torah, his wisdom, Yisrael. If we was listening today, one of the things that Reak Dawid mentioned in the Torah, that even that Malat, when he heard that the Torah had been revealed, it had been found, that he rent himself, his clothing. We should rent ourselves, Yisrael, of the sin, of the rebelliousness, as the Torah of Yahweh has been made manifest in the midst of Yisrael, that we tear off the old garment of this flesh. And that we be clothed with the garments of the Ruach, of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. That we may continue to walk in this Torah and in his Mishra. That we do all things that he has commanded us to do. Is it for his benefit? Is it for his, uh, his honor, Yisrael? More so also for the house of Yisrael. That his Torah benefits us. That we may grow in, in, in the knowledge and the understanding of Yahshua. Hamashiach. So let us stand to our feet. This beautiful day Yahweh has given us. Has it not given us breath? Has it not given us life, Yisrael? Hallelujah. So every day, every day is beautiful. Hallelujah. Yeah. Abba Yahweh, we do totally you for this another, another Shabbat Eve, another Shabbat you have given us, Abba Yahweh. For your Mishpah, for your word, for your truly fed us this day. We do barak you for all those that are listening by via of live stream, that you strengthen them, that you keep Yisrael. And for those that have gathered here at Teshua community, we, all the Zakeh, all the Akhir, y'all, we ask that you would take them home safely, his Isha, and take all those to the appointed place, the appointed time safely, that your medicine would be a camp around Kol Yisrael this day. And all things we barak you in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yabarak Ko Yisrael. Hallelujah.